Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Big Idea. I'm your host, Jason Seymour, and I'm the spokesperson for the U.S. Mission to ASEAN. The mission started this program because we know that Southeast Asia is filled, filled with many, many leaders, and their stories can inspire us all, and they've taken big ideas, and they've turned those ideas into a reality. So today we have a very special guest today. I'm very pleased to bring you a uh, Fulbrighter, someone who's been involved in all kinds of groups and associations and has been helping women and entrepreneurs and looking at digital technology and so many, so many issues. So let's bring her in now. And I introduce you to Sokita Tuch. Welcome to the program. Yes, thank you, Jason. Yes, thank you so much. Now, before we get to all the serious stuff, we have to take a moment and acknowledge that Cambodians are celebrating a very special day today. So please tell us about this holiday. And if you have a message for the Cambodians who are listening, please. Yes, um, thank you, Jason. And first of all, I would like to say thank you to um, uh, your group that uh, try to make this uh, happen. And then I think it's important uh, with our conference that we can share um, knowledge, share each other uh, fun things, what's going on in Cambodia or outside of Cambodia, between Cambodia and US, between Cambodia in, and other ASEAN country. So today, as you just said, it's uh, uh, my New Year's in Cambodia, and not just only in Cambodia, it also in other ASEAN country like in Laos, Myanmar, and Thailand. We have uh, uh, the same uh, New Year. So I uh, would like to uh, take this opportunity to um, celebrate and wish all the best to everyone in Cambodia, outside of Cambodia enjoy the moment that we have and good luck and avoid uh, COVID-19 and uh, stay safe. Thank you. Yes, and uh, I'll lift up my cup of uh, guava juice and say well, well, happy new year <laughs> to the people who are <laughs> celebrating. So it's a, a, a wonderful time. And of course, people in uh, Southeast Asia, many people are also celebrating Ramadan. So this is a very, very special time. So how will people in Cambodia celebrate the, the new year? Yeah, in Cambodia, um, because of COVID-19, so then uh, people uh, stay home and then they enjoy uh, food with their family. Like a question from my family, we uh, normally we uh, work and we really have time together. But because of our New Year, we stay home. We enjoy the moment together. We cook food together. We eat food and we uh, watch TV together. And then we say each other what's going on in the past and what's the plan in the future. And then we say each other fun things. And then we uh, give a call to other relatives and friends in uh, other places like uh, we have some friend in US, some friend in uh, Singapore, some friend in um, also in other countries. So then we um, uh, call each other and uh, we wish each other during the Khmer New Year's. Mm. Well, it's good to hear that even COVID-19 has not stopped friends and families from getting together and enjoying good food. But it is a reality that COVID-19 has had a very dramatic impact on the economy. In the, in the United States, when it's holiday time, it's Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, a lot of companies and a lot of businesses, that's when they make a lot of money. And of course, the hotel industry, tourism, so many things, so many businesses have been impacted by COVID-19. How, how has COVID-19 affected the, the, the business community and the labor markets in Cambodia? Yeah, it's also um, in uh, US, Cambodia um, also impacted uh, by COVID-19. Last year in 2020, we uh, also have a negative impact from COVID-19, but uh, start in 2021, we have more negative impact because of the outbreak of COVID-19. And then 
um, many businesses, especially uh, businesses in um, uh, tourism industry, they uh, mostly uh, impacted and then it go to garment factory because you know other country also have a uh, COVID-19 and then also some uh, lockdown so then we cannot um, send the uh, goods uh, to other country. There are some low stage uh, issue. There are some uh, order that they postpone or they cancel. So then uh, government factory also uh, have negatively uh, impact from uh, COVID-19. Beside that, other businesses like um, restaurants, also uh, uh, small, medium, even uh, light businesses, they uh, put on hold for uh, some reason because uh, of no customer, no order. So then a lot of uh, negative impact to our uh, Cambodian economic uh, uh, growth in 2021. But uh, recently the government announced that um, the export to US uh, it's increased in pairing uh, for Q1, quarter one, uh, comparing to uh, Q1 2020. So it's shown um, increased uh, number for our export to US, but I don't remember uh, how many percentage uh, of increase, uh, export increase, but it's shown that uh, it increased, yes. We'll take good news where we can get it, right? A little bit of good news in the middle of the bad news. But I, I certainly think of my own experience with Cambodia. I traveled there on a vacation. I went to Phnom Penh, I went to Angkor Wat, spent money on hotels and restaurants. And now you're not getting as many tourists from the United States and other places. So it, it, it definitely has a serious impact. Now I, I've read that uh, countries have been People in various countries throughout Southeast Asia, as well as the United States, uh, that there's been a disparate impact on women compared to men. So how have you found COVID-19 specifically affecting women in, in the labor force? Yeah, I um, first of all, I would like to um, introduce myself a little bit so then uh, our audiences uh, know uh, who I am and what I'm doing today. So I would like to say thank you to our audiences and I would like to take this opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Kita Tuj. I'm the co-founder and the CEO of Wemo. Wemo is the e-commerce platform to promote uh, local products, especially uh, local made by uh, our women producer, not just in capital city, but also outside of capital city. And going back to your question, how COVID um, have uh, any impact to women? Yes, of course, like I just um, told you um, recently it's about the impact to uh, tourism industry and also garment factory. So then these um, two main uh, industries, um, we have a lot of uh, women employee and then also uh, women uh, employers in this industry as well. So then um, when COVID um, came, um, they also uh, get a lot of uh, impacts a negative impacts from uh, COVID-19, especially for those who uh, work in uh, informal economy. For those who uh, work in informal economy, they uh, can get some uh, subsidy from government, also from other development partner. But for those who uh, work in informal economy, you know, uh, somehow it's difficult to figure out uh, where are they located. And then um, the system uh, cannot um, quickly uh, support them or give them uh, 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 any financial support or other support that they need. So there are some issues for uh, informal economy and especially most of women, they are working and living in uh, informal economy. You've certainly been trying to contribute and, and help women, women entrepreneurs. And I know that you have a group called Womentum that I read about. Could you share a little with our audience about Womentum? Yeah, Womentum actually is a social enterprise. It uh, found by a woman from uh, Tunisia and she went to Singapore uh, with her husband and then she faced a lot of challenges as the 
a foreign uh, woman living and working in foreign countries. So then she faced a lot of uh, challenges in terms of uh, friendship, in terms of fam family, in terms of uh, uh, financial support. She faced a lot of things and she also um, had um, two kids at the time. So then she found out, okay, um, she actually is a civil engineer. So she said, that, okay, uh, she uh, can do something because she experienced herself. So she started um, Momentum in Singapore 2014. And then I met her in 2016 when um, she was in Cambodia and we have um, a little bit of uh, talk about the issues of women entrepreneurs in uh, Cambodia as well as in other countries. And then I went to Singapore once and we um, continue our discussion. I brought um, we went to Cambodia in late 2018. The woman term actually is a platform to uh, promote women entrepreneurship, especially uh, startup uh, businesses um, run by women because we found that a lot of women, like I said, um, they are in informal economy, so they don't really have uh, much knowledge about doing businesses. And then they have less of uh, access to market, access to funding. So then Momentum uh, was set up to help them in that way. And then we can uh, provide actually um, first uh, uh, stage, we also a plat or crowdfunding uh, 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 platform to help uh, those women. And I found that in Cambodia, we also need kind of this platform. That's why I brought into Cambodia. Well, that's all really great work. And one of the things that you were talking about was how uh, women, entrepreneurs, people, business people should find a support network, reach out. There are lots of resources, there are peers. Uh, the US Mission to ASEAN has the Young Southeast Asian Leadership Initiative. And we have a, a, a network which any member of the audience who's not part of this network yet, uh, you know, look into it. We'll have the information in our description with this video, but to find peers and to have conversations. And a quick uh, mention to our audience, if you have a question for Sakita, please put it in the chat, uh, the, the, the chat space, the messages, and uh, we, will, we will address it during this interview. But Sakita, do you think that women have specific challenges trying to be entrepreneurs in Cambodia or Southeast Asia? And if so, what are some of those challenges that women specifically face? Yeah, I uh, would say um, um, not just only in Cambodia um, that women um, face those challenges. Um, I went to US, I went to Europe, I went to other country, developed country, um, still a uh, woman still face a lot of challenges. But now I'm talking on behalf of a uh, woman in developing country, especially in Cambodia. Because when we look at um, our uh, education, so I'm start with uh, education. When we look at the uh, uh, education, so then women or girl have less education than men and boy when we uh, come to a university uh, degree or um, secondary um, uh, degree. So then so we have uh, less women and girl. And then when it go to uh, businesses, so then um, most of the um, small, medium enterprises are managed by a woman. So men, they manage uh, big businesses, they manage uh, medium businesses, but uh, small businesses, mostly you can see um, a lot of women manage it. In Cambodia, we found that 65%, um, 65%, uh, you know, a lot uh, of uh, um, uh, small, medium enterprises are managed by women. So a lot of women in this industry. And then um, they are facing not just only uh, uh, education, but also um, like you just mentioned about uh, support network. Because um, from our um, uh, uh, norm and uh, tradition, so most women, they um, work and they um, make business at home. So then they um, also have some burden from the family or household work. So then they don't really have much time to um, do network uh, outside. And then if they go out, 
they um, uh, get um, state of tie or complaint from uh, neighborhood or from other men. So there are a lot of issues that uh, a, a women are facing. But uh, recently I found that um, a lot of uh, a women, they are uh, strong, then they go out, they talk to each other, they can also get support from men. Um, I can also give you example recently that we uh, set up a support network. So then uh, most women, they can um, uh, approach each other, they can share each other challenges and then they collectively uh, find solutions to work together and address the issue. Beside um, education, beside uh, uh, stereotype, uh, we also found that a uh, woman uh, uh, lack of um, uh, uh, digital uh, knowledge because you know um, currently we talk about uh, digital economy. So um, technology digitalization has no border. Like for example, right now we can do online uh, uh, talks. So then uh, some women, in especially uh, uh, those who live in rural area. So then they um, uh, don't have access to uh, uh, listen to what we are talking. They don't know how to get it done. So a lot of challenges about uh, digital uh, transformation that I can say uh, at the moment. Yeah. And besides that, we also uh, found that uh, access to uh, market, access to uh, finance, um, also the, the major uh, issues for uh, a woman. Hmm. What do you think is the barrier to women being uh, having access to education? Is it a cultural issue? Is there still a perception that uh, daughters and girls, it's not as important to educate them? Or is it something else? I, I think um, still it's about cultural issue because uh, some family, they still think that uh, men and uh, boys should uh, study more, they should uh, do more, and uh, women and girls should um, uh, stay home and do housework. And then uh, even um, we have a lot of um, program awareness uh, raising program about gender equality, gender uh, uh, equity in our educational uh, system, but still uh, some family, they uh, still put girl and woman uh, at home. And also I noticed that um, for those who uh, live in the city, even they have a job to do, they have um, business uh, to, to run, but when they go back home, they still do household work. And the men, um, we observe that they, when they go back, or oh, they um, do something else. Uh, but some family, they share uh, a household uh, responsibility. But still, uh, some women, uh, when they go to work, they still uh, work uh, with um, other uh, men. They still get some discrimination uh, from the men at their workplace. And when they go to uh, home, they still do household work. And you know, during COVID-19, um, um, uh, kids are supposed to have online learning at home. So then women again, uh, still taking care of uh, 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 children education at home. So then um, uh, during this um, COVID crisis, uh, we also share each other about um, the issue faced by women. And um, myself also with a team also conduct you uh, a session about mental uh, healing. So during the COVID-19 and business also has some challenges, what can be done? So we need to be uh, calm and we need to, how can we release that? We also have this kind of program for our women in our community. Now you obviously have a lot of confidence and you're very well educated. Did you have a supportive family growing up that inspired you to pursue those goals? Or was that just something special about you that you pushed forward and made it happen? Yeah, thank you for these questions. I uh, would like to give this credit to my mom. Um, she actually um, uh, did not have a higher education. Um, she, uh, uh, I'm, um, I very much uh, appreciate uh, her effort uh, to push uh, her kid to study hard to get a higher education. 
So I remember since I was uh, young, I was in uh, uh, I was born in a rural area, and we didn't have anything at the time. And she tried hard to uh, uh, make money. So from that time, I still remember. Uh, uh, now I, I already recall what she did for our family. She uh, work hard. She also bring us along. You know um, the trend at the time. She. Uh, uh, brought us on the train and put some uh, products on the train and then she stopped uh, one station to another station to drop uh, her product to her customer but uh, her kids are on the train with her. I, I still remember that's why I always tell myself so uh, whatever I'm doing I still put the woman or the gender is the core of my uh, work even I work for a private sector I work for non-profit organization I work for public uh, organization I still put a woman and gender as the core work of my uh, of what I'm doing yeah so my mom is a, a role model what I can be uh, myself today. And were you raised by both of your parents? Uh, was your father part of your upbringing as well? Yes, um, talking about gender equality. Uh, so then I can uh, have a story to, to share with uh, you and with uh, our audiences. I um, get a lot of support from my dad because my uh, father, he's um, always say to uh, everyone in the family, Either you are a girl or boy, so you need to study hard. I don't have any property to share with you when you are uh, getting, uh, when you grow up. So then just only education. So you, know, you need to grab th that opportunity. So then my father is the best example of uh, uh, men's support and gender equality because he said that uh, either you are a girl, but uh, if you can study uh, uh, more, let do it, let go. And everything at home, just um, I and uh, your mom can manage. So just go. So um, talking about education, uh, myself and my brother, my sister can uh, get um, higher education, can study abroad. So the, all this, um, I can say, is uh, from my uh, mom, my dad's uh, support, I can say. Yeah. I asked about your dad because I was thinking about my grandparents, uh, my Grandmother was the first woman in her family to go to higher education and she got her PhD and she married my grandfather and my grandfather used to tell me that some men would would say to him, you know, aren't you a little intimidated that your wife has been so successful and he used to say no because we're a married couple we're a team so her success is my success. So the, the path to success for women comes from both men and women. We both have a role to play to provide opportunities to all men and all women so they can reach their potential. It, it's a team effort. So yeah, I want to talk- Yeah, it's about uh, team effort. It's about uh, uh, solidarity and also um, common interest because uh, my, my, my father, he's a, uh, work in the public sector, but uh, he's uh, always promote uh, 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 gender equality. So everywhere he go, he always talk about uh, his daughter, his son. So it's equally uh, treated. So I, I never feel that, oh, my brother have a better chance than me, or uh, I, I never feel that in, in my family. I always share it to other people. So you should treat um, your kid uh, fairly so then um, they can uh, grow, you can uh, unlock their potential. So my, my mom, my dad, or my sister, my brother, they, uh, we always uh, discuss uh, about uh, our plan and then we uh, together agree to go for it or not, yeah. Fantastic. Now you went to the United States on the Fulbright program. Uh, tell us a little bit about your experience with the Fulbright program and, and living in the United States. Yes, um, actually I before I went to uh, United States in 2019, before I got a Fulbright scholarship, I was in uh, IVLP program in 2018. So when I was in 2018, I, I, I would like to share a little bit uh, at the time because um, before I submit my application, 
at the time I feel I, I never know uh, uh, US I just watch a movie oh okay uh, US is a, a, a good country is a dream country for, for everyone so then I decided to uh, submit my application and then um, luckily I yeah got uh, selected and then I went to US with other um, uh, uh, 11 uh, women entrepreneur and I went to uh, three states so in DC, uh, Iowa, I went to Iowa and also uh, 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 Seattle. I found that, okay, I, I need to come back. And then when I come back, I um, got an announcement from the US embassies about uh, Fulbright. And then I told my mom, mom, I want to go back to US because I found a lot of uh, opportunity there. I can connect too many people. And then I want to grow my uh, business uh, mindset. So I want to go back. And then she said, go, go. Even you um, uh, want to do anything, let's do it. Don't hesitate to do it, just do it. And don't think about any results, just apply at the time. I, I, I have no clue about uh, Fulbright application. So I just submitted and then uh, got into you and finally I uh, uh, passed the interview. So these two stories I want to share to other uh, audiences. So if you uh, want to do something, just do it and make it happen. Don't wait for others, just make it happen, you will get it. You know, I when I was in uh, US in uh, 2018, I told uh, uh, our friend over there, they said, oh, Suchita, you uh, came here just a few days, so I didn't have chance to uh, uh, take you to other places. I told them, don't worry, I will come back for sure. And then I make it, you know? <laughs> so then I want to send a message that if you want to do something, just do it, make it happen. Believe That's in yourself. That's yeah. a great message because so many people uh, refrain from taking chances in life because they're scared or they think they'll fail. But that's a great message. Just try, just do it. Just put yourself out there. You never know what could happen. And there are so many opportunities to be had and they're usually taken by people who are willing to take that chance and take that risk. So just do it. There's a US company that used that as a slogan too. And so it's a popular phrase. So if you could go back to the United States in 2022, uh, where would you want to visit? What would you want to do there? Yeah, um, actually in 2019, I um, went to 12 states. And then I want to uh, visit all states in US because I want uh -huh. to see uh, uh, what uh, um, they have in different states because uh, I went to 12 states. Each state has um, their unique points. I found yes. um, each state has their unique points and people are different from uh, one state to another. And then opportunity also uh, different from one to another too. So then um, when I was uh, in um, those 12 states, I found uh, 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 two things or three things from uh, US. So one is about access to information. So when I um, went there, I um, also feel uh, uh, frustrated a little bit about uh, what's going on. So how can I, I, I get appointment with uh, senior people in US, um, like uh, US uh, uh, Department, US Chamber of Commerce, and all those uh, people are uh, at the high ranks, uh, 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 high ranking uh, uh, people. So how can I approach those people? But um, because of access to information, I can uh, get into their website, I can um, get information from the website. I can send them uh, emails straight away. So then um, I can uh, meet them finally. So I uh, really appreciate about access to information in US. So everywhere, every state I go, so I can find information, find people I want to meet uh, easily. So it's a, a first impression uh, when I was in US. And the second uh, uh, impression I have when I was in US is about um, uh, technology. Because uh, I want to buy something it easy, I just uh, place my address. So then um, a few days, uh, it come to my door. So then um, they just put um, the product I order on my uh, doorstep. So then I can get what I want quickly. And it just um, one click or two click, I can get what I want. 
So it's um, it uh, it taught me something at the time. That's why when I got back, I said, okay. When I was there, I said, okay, I need to do something. Finally, when I got back to Cambodia, I set up e-commerce uh, uh, company because I was inspired by uh, uh, e-commerce in US. So I can buy everything uh, just only one or two clicks. So this is the impression I have uh, uh, from uh, US uh, visit. Uh, yeah. Even um, you asked about uh, uh, which state that I will uh, go back. So, you know, um, my mom, my dad, uh, they never uh, go to U.S. But uh, when we talk about uh, U.S., um, my dad always said, okay, he want to visit Hawaii. So I will go there. Uh, I will bring them to, visit, uh, to see what's going on in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And my mom said, oh, I want to visit uh, New York. So, yeah. So these two states, I, I will go for sure. I will bring my mom, my dad uh, with me as well. Yes. And if, if you could meet a, a, a famous speaker or politician or leader in the United States? Is there anyone you would like to meet? Oh, uh, actually in um, 2019, I met uh, uh, Harry Clinton. At the time she uh, uh, launched her box. And then I, uh, I know at the time I was in uh, Washington DC, but I saw the announcement that she uh, uh, launched uh, her box in New York. So then I booked the ticket. I uh, uh, flew to New York and then uh, finally I met her there during uh, her book launching. So that's why um, meeting um, famous people, meeting uh, politician, I said uh, uh, to myself and share with uh, my friend, it's not uh, difficult if you have a willingness to do something. So there's, uh, if you have a will, there is a way to go there. So finally, I met uh, Harry uh, Clinton uh, during her book launching in New York. And then some, actually, I also uh, 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 visit a, a few places in uh, DC and I met um, a few people, a politician people as well at the US State Art Department. So I'm, I told myself, wow, um, this trip is so meaningful. So I got my research done. I met my uh, uh, professor. I met uh, Cambodian people because I went to uh, Lowell. I went to California that uh, most of Cambodian people are living there. I met uh, uh, those people. I met uh, my uh, uh, friends from Canada. We are now become friends. So not just only about academic life when I was in US. So many things I, I can learn from, I can connect to. As a woman, as a leader, do you remember any tips that you heard from Hillary Clinton? Or is there something about Hillary Clinton that inspires you? You obviously really wanted to meet her or see her. What is it about Hillary Clinton that is special to you? Yeah, it's about um, her characteristics of uh, being a woman in politics. And then um, when I met her there, when I uh, 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 read her books, I told myself, and also during the uh, event in US because I was invited into uh, to attend many uh, uh, regional global event in, US, in US. And then I told people there, I want to see the world led by women. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, when, when um, I saw the uh, election result, Finally, I can see uh, 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 why president is a woman. So I'm so glad because uh, when I was there, I always wish to see uh, the world led by women. So I hope that um, more women in the higher position and uh, lead the country, lead the company, um, and, and, and also um, they will work uh, collaboratively uh, with the men and make the best of the world. Mm. We have a question from our audience who wants to know if there's a particular woman leader right now who inspires you, and it could be in business or a politician, is there a woman right now that inspires you? Yes, um, uh, like I said uh, from the beginning, uh, uh, my mom is the first woman who inspired me because I uh, live with her since I was born, so she's always in my head, she always 
uh, 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 give me advice what uh, to do, what not to do as a woman, as a human being, even she less education, but she's uh, perfectly uh, 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 is an advisor for me uh, and uh, the role model for me. And another uh, woman um, from our uh, country is uh, 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 our uh, former queen um, because uh, she helped our king to build a country. So uh, her name uh, is uh, Andra Devi. So then I inspired by her role models as a, a, a wife of the man, even she is not uh, publicly uh, shown to the people, but she has done many things. And she, the, she is the one who promote our uh, culture and education at the time during the Korean uh, uh, period. But um, when we talk about uh, a uh, woman uh, who can inspire me more, actually, um, I always uh, look up the role model of um, Oprah Winfrey because she is a, a black woman and she has done many things uh, in US. And then, um, you know what, I plan to meet her, but uh, I cannot uh, book a ticket for her uh, talk show. Um, she also have a talk show. I tried to book ticket to uh, watch um, her talk show uh, by my uh, eyes. It's what's going on. And then, um, you know, uh, when I got back from US, I also set up a, a media program and I always watch her show. I always uh, share her uh, tip with uh, our team. How can we make a great show to our people? Uh, in Cambodia, we, uh, when I uh, got back from US in uh, March 2020, we set up a program called Women Tech Media. So we create a show talking about women and technology. Hmm. Wow. Well, I, uh, this conversation has gone by so quickly. <laughs> and we're already at the end of the show. But uh, I was going to ask you at the beginning, but uh, would you like to share a Happy New Year message in Khmer with the audience? Yes. Um, I, I think I, I already start from the beginning, but uh, uh, at least um, uh, and of the show, I would, <laughs> I would like to uh, uh, say, um, uh, would like to send some messages um, to our audiences. So, if you invest in women, it means that you invest in yourself, you invest in your family, you invest in your society. So this is the message I always send out to uh, uh, people. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining the show. Uh, we, as always, we only scratch the surface, as we say in English. And there's so much more to learn about all that you're doing for entrepreneurs, for businesses, for, for men and for women, you are helping so many people. And if anyone wants to learn more about Sakita, we'll have contact information in our description. And please, I hope everyone enjoys